What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at classes in Dart. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to start to look at classes with Dart. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at classes in Dart. Now, obviously, classes is a gigantic area to talk about. And so we're just going to sort of start to talk about it in this video, create some very basic classes, give you the groundwork of how this works, and kind of move on from there. So if we head over to our code, I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Dart videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, it's just our basic Dart starter code, and I'm calling it c.dart. And what I wanna do is create a person class. Now, if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming and classes in general, just a very, very quick overview. A class allows you to create an object, which is basically a blueprint. So you can define some object of reality into a program. So if you wanna define a person, well, what does a person have? Well, they might have a name, an age, a height, a sex, a address, phone number, whatever you want to define in your object is your class you can do. You could sort of create a blueprint of a person. If you want to create a hat blueprint, right? You know, what are hats? What, what sort of things define hats? Well, the size, large, medium, small, the color, the shape, the whatever. So anytime you have a thing you want to sort of map out into a program, you can use a class to do that. Just a very basic overview of a class. So to create a class, we come outside of our main guy right here, and we use this class keyword, and then a class name is always capitalized. So if we wanna create a person, it's capital P, right? So inside of here, we can define sort of the roadmap of what our class is going to map out, right? So I'm gonna say a string, and I'm gonna make this question mark, cause you know, the nullable thing we talked about a few videos ago, and our person is gonna have a name. It's also gonna have a sex, let's say. And then we also want an integer, also not nullable. And, you know, let's call this age. So we're just gonna keep this person very simple. They're just gonna have three things, name, sex, and age, right? Very easy. So now we need to create a constructor. So let's call this constructor. And here I'm gonna use the same name as our class right here. Now you'll notice this is not like void person. It's just flat out person. And then inside of here, we need to define these things that we're going to be passing in here for each person. So we're going to have a string for a name, sex, and then we also have an integer of age, right? So then inside of here, we need to define what we're going to be doing is passing these things. So name, John, sex, male, age 44. So we need to match those up to these things here. So here we just call name equals name, sex equals sex, and age equals age. Now, not so fast. Which one are we talking about here? Name? Is it this name? Or is it this name? You know, how, how does that work? Well, quite simply, this will equal this, if we use the this keyword, I guess. So we need to call this dot for each of these things, right? So this is basically, hey, take this that we passed into this constructor here and assign it to this, which is this, right? So these things here are these things up here, right? Okay, so strictly speaking, this is pretty much all we really need. This is sort of our blueprint. We've defined what it means to be a person in this program. Person has a name, they have a sex, and they have an age, right? Well, okay, that's great, but now let's create a method that does something with this information. Now, methods are basically functions. We call them functions when they're not in a class. When they're in a class, we call them methods. Same thing though, right? So we can do our void thing here. And let's say we wanna show data, I don't know, or show person or whatever. Let's just say show data. And now we can do something. So let's just, you know, print out, and let's say name equals name. And let's also print out sex equals sex. And we also want to print out age equals age. Right? So now we can call this method, and it will print out these things for each of our persons, persons, people, whatever. Okay, so we've defined all this stuff. Now let's actually create one in our program. So let's come up here to the top. 
And to create one of these, we call our person class, and then we name this. Let's say person one, right? P1. And that's going to be a person. And now inside of here, we need to pass in who P1 is, right? So P1 will be John. John is male, and he is 44 years old, right? Now notice John, male, and 44 need to be in the same order as name, sex, and age right here. If we swap these around, things are going to get confusing. And since we have different data types, strings and integers, that's going to flummox the whole thing, right? So, okay, we've created this. Now we can do something. So let's go p1.showData, right? So this will call this method, which will take these things which have been assigned in to this p1 person, and it will print them out if we've done this all correctly, right? So let's go ahead and save this, head over to our terminal, I'm in my C Dart stuff directory, and let's run Dart C dot Dart, and we get John male 44, which is exactly what we would expect because that's what's printed out here. Very cool. Now, we can at any time call anything from our P1 person, and we can print out anything from P1 that we want. So let's say we want to print out P1.name. Now we can access any of the things in here. So dot name, we can access dot sex, dot age, whatever we want, but let's just start with dot name. Head back over here, run this guy again, and boom, it prints out John. Very cool. Instead of doing it like this, we can kind of play around with this if we want. Another way to do this, we could say print person's name is, and you can do, you can use these brackets here to call name. They are same deal here. Let's just go sex. Just another way to do this. And age years old dot dot dot. Right. So if we wanted to do it like that, we could if we come back over here. Well, we actually still have to come up here and then call p1 dot show data. If we did that, came back over here, run this guy again. We see the person's name is John, they're male and 44 years old, right? And we're still printing out John there. So anyway, you want to do this lots of different ways to play around with this. And that's all there is to it. Now, if we get rid of this. Now let's say get rid of this, we can create a second person just as easily as we did the first one. So again, we'll call person and let's call P2, right? And this is going to be a person. And this is going to be Mary. Mary's sex is female. And Mary is say 29. We can at any time we want call P2 dot say show data. Or we could call P2 dot, you know, age, whatever we want. However you want to do this, that's how that works. Come back over here, run this guy again. Actually, let's clear the screen. And now we see Mary is a female. She's 29. Person's name is Mary. They are female and 29 years old. Very cool. Now this, we just printed out P2. We can also print out, you know, P1. P1 still exists, right? So if we do both of these, clear the screen, we get First one is for P1, which was John. The second one is P2, which is Mary. So this is a massively fast intro to classes with Dart, but you can see very easy to do this. And there's lots of different ways you could set this up. This is just sort of a, one of the standard ways. You don't even have to create a constructor if you want. You could create another method that sets your data. But you know, either way, it's pretty much the same thing. But we just do it this way. So not that hard to wrap your brain around. Like I said. Classes are a giant topic. You could talk for days and days and days on classes. This is just a very quick intro on how to start to use classes with Dart, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.